So we're here to talk about Vault MX specifically. Uh, so, so we're going to go through uh, what we see as the roadmap. The first uh, branded version of HCL Vault MX is actually coming out in March of next year. 9.1 is the current release of the product, um, but the 9.2 release coming in March will be the first HCL washed version of the product. So if you're interested in trying the product now, you can get your hands on it, um, but with the Vault MX branding that's coming in March. Um, I think one of the, we're gonna sort of talk about probably three important things in this release. First, is this release actually contains a number of very important uh, customer fixes associated with it, with some of our customers. Um, and uh, we've been working very hard to make sure that we align to those. The second area is really around the fit and finish. And uh, we, I have some slides for Jason to talk to, I have three slides after this. He can show you some of the exploration that the team has been doing in that area. Um, there is going to be um, some enhancements to this release in the workflow design. Um, when you actually get more experience of Vault MX, you'll realize they're built uh, actually directly accessible within the IDE, but as part of the integration, you can actually design a really complex workflow design, which is tremendous. Um, and also in this release, we're going to be including support for an external rules engine, in this case, uh, rules, to allow you to augment your more complex application designs as well. And then we and get I think to the head. one, yeah, the one we think we yeah. forgot was Domino, right? Uh, oh in, yeah, uh, that's here. right. <laughs> right. So this is gonna be, uh, you know, we showed yesterday some of the power of going from Lotus Script and, and being able to expose the power of Voltamax, but we're gonna do it the other way around as well. Uh, and you'll see some of this throughout the next two to three days, um, but we are building toolkits that will allow you to leverage Domino and leverage Domino services directly from Volt MX as well. So kind of 360 integration as it were. Sorry to interrupt, Andrew. No, no, it's a, it's a good ad, Jason. And the other fact is when we get to the other slides, people will see that in context. The next area um, in uh, April, May, June, it, you know, continuing on the drumbeat that we have um, is really something that I know I'm excited about, I know you are, and I know that the respective product teams are um, that we span both from the HCL DX side, but also the Vault MX side is how do we, uh, and you heard, um, you have Francois and I talking about this in the context of the session on day one, but how do we reuse some of those wonderful, rich content assets, which are in the DX DAM and the CMS integration today? Now, I know Jason, you've been working with the team closely on that. What, what do you think a couple of highlights are? You know, it's pretty exciting, Andrew, to be able to take curated content, which is something you really can't do today, and put it in an app, right, and continue that curation of that content and allow other teams to continue to work and evolve it, but expose it in your application. Uh, it's 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 going to be really quite powerful, and the way we're intending on integrating it is going to make it really easy to bring that content that's being curated with the CMS, uh, being exposed using the dam, and dragging and dropping it right onto your app. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, talking about Domino integration, um, we heard that um, you know Domino V12 is coming in the Q2 timeframe. Uh, we heard that from uh, Francois and also from Barry, which is tremendous. Um, and obviously that would be the place, right, Jason, where the toolkit will be hardened, right? That's and correct. I know there's some other opportunities there as well. So our big uh, release uh, for Vault MX after um, the first release in March is really going to be our version 10. And you remember that from Richard's slide. Um, there are a number of things that we need to focus on. Um, I want to call out, you know, a couple of them. Uh, and, and a lot of them are actually to do with continuing the leadership of the technology, wouldn't you say, Jason? I think that's absolutely true. And, and you can see some of the highlights right here. Open API v3 support, of course, taking to the next level, the PWAs. And then I, I know you're pretty excited about offline objects and the things we're doing there as well. Yeah, no, it's tremendous. And also particularly because, I mean, we have this great VR, AR, you know, AI, ML toolkit. And I know that's something your team's particularly excited about is, you know, adding support for other engines 
uh, another technology because um, I'm sure there's another AR device just around the corner somewhere. So I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also a couple of other things that we talked about here is, um, you know, one of the strengths of, of Vault MX is really in the DevOps tool chains. And that's something that we're going to put some additional focus on uh, to improve it in that area as well. And then I think lastly, it's really, you know, in the area of cloud native, right? I mean, I think as an organization, and maybe Jason, you were actually the first one thinking about it from a DX perspective, um, who led DX into the world of uh, containers at that point, even before. Feels like, a mil feels like a million years ago, Andrew. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, <laughs> so we're going to take uh, Vault MX on the similar sort of journey as well, which is tremendous. I think it so bears Jason, in mind uh, also, uh, just real quick, yep. Andrew, is I think it bears in mind, we, you and I both said it yesterday, but I want to make sure everyone hears it. This is going to be the very first product where we are open sourcing the documentation, all of it. Uh, and yep. we are going to allow every single one of you, all our customers and all our partners, to participate, submit pull requests, add to the documentation, modify and change it. So we're really excited about that. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a great innovation. And once you see the documentation, you'll know why, which is uh, fantastic. All right. So in the interest of time, Jason, I know you've got some great slides here to show some of the arts of the possible. Let's fly through them real quick. So this okay. is going to be the new launch screen for Volt Iris. Iris, of course, is the IDE uh, where you go off and actually build things. And we're making a lot of progress. I think it looks it looks pretty slick, actually. Yeah, it does. Yeah, hit the next one for me. Right. We're creating a, a new metaphor for how you build apps. Uh, today, the way the tool works is it sort of just drops you into the IDE, and then there's no real wizard that you can tell it how you want to set it up. But we're we're adding that so that you'll be able to tell it you know, I want to do a PWA or I want to do a native iPad app, for example, and it will actually configure the IDE for you. Let me go ahead. And we're changing the complete look and feel of the IDE. Now, you'll be able to download it today, be able to use it, uh, and it's a very exciting, just amazing tool, but we think we can do better. Uh, and working with our very talented designers, we're going to make things that are much more accessible, much more easy to use, and more developer friendly. And here you can see some examples of it. Yep, I think it looks really sharp, Jason. Really, yeah, really it's, sharp. it's really coming together. Yeah, and I love that dark background. <laughs> <laughs> so this is running on a Mac, right? This is amazing. A designer that runs on a Mac. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a great yeah. concept. <laughs> what a concept, right? <laughs> <laughs> so on that, maybe that's the the segue to. That's the a great episode. segue. Yes, yep. exactly. So uh, Jason and I have some slides here, which are really um, how we imagine the the vision uh, over a number of years, how we're going to leverage the Vault MX technology and your existing investments in Domino to augment what you have, further protect that investment, but also leverage some of that fantastic capabilities from an IDE perspective and also from, um, you know, from a P PWA delivery as well. So Jason, um, first up, right, uh, Foundry, Right, which is our middleware layer in Vault MX integrating with Domino. That's right. I mean, it's going to happen via a project called Keep, which many of you have seen pieces of before. You're going to get a whole lot more both today and tomorrow on Project Keep from Stefan, Paul, and the team. And uh, it's pretty exciting what you can do between Vault MX and Domino. And by the time we get to 12, you're going to be doing just some incredible things. Yeah, it's tremendous. Now, I think that's exciting. The next step. This but one wait, is. there's more. <laughs> there's more, right? There's three, That's right? right? So number two. Um, <laughs> so that, we, that was Foundry. That was in the middleware layer with Domino. But what if we could take Iris, which is the IDE, and Flare, which is the patented engine, which does the rendering uh, on the native devices uh, and also the PWA, uh, PWA support. What if we could make that, you know, add that designer to a domino system. How cool would that be? I think it'd be amazing. And, and what if we went even further and started supporting Linux as well? Oh, and, and, and maybe Lotus Script and had toolkits where we could go back and forth. Imagine yep. what you could do. Yeah, exactly. So if you were developing today on Windows, we would add uh, Mac and Linux, and you can move between all of those. Um, I think it's really cool. And I think also your, uh, your toolkit fits into that, that bottom space as well, right? It does, indeed. Excellent. All right. Okay, so one more, right? 
Now, this is something I can, I can trace, and I saw uh, Taya Hussman's uh, ping. This, this actually goes, this idea goes back to Jason when you and I were on the ship, right? And I remember we had the time, we had those wonderful little circle diagram, the sort of virtuous uh, circle, didn't we? We did indeed. In fact, we made that circle a half an hour before we walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and how prophetic it was. Yeah, exactly. But the, idea, but the idea is very simple. Imagine that you can build um, components in Iris and then actually use them on Domino. And maybe you're actually using them in this case, you're actually using them in the context of Domino Vault, right? So for instance, you build, you build an application um, in Domino Vault, you, you feel like you need to have another uh, component or widget on the canvas. You go and talk to your, your um, professional developer like Jason here and you say you want it to do this and that and he says, all right, no problem. I'll go into Iris and I'll build you something and I'll give you the components. There's also something else is weird here as well, Jason, that you know, maybe you build something in Domino Vault and maybe it's become successful, but um, you want to expand it. You may, may want to take it to other places, right, Jason? That's true. Maybe you want to bring it in and add more capabilities to it. Maybe you want to add new functions to it, or perhaps even you want to scale it out and, and be able to go to not just tens or hundreds or thousands, but hundreds of thousands of users with this particular app. You'll Absolutely. be able to do that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. tremendous. And, and there's, there's other opportunities out there too, but uh, I think these are really three positive, substantial, you know, um, ideas and a vision for where we want to go, right? Um, right. You know, thinking about it from a domino developer standpoint um, and you're looking at the direction we're going, I think it's really exciting. I think the community is going to get really excited about this. I think you're looking at something where within two years you'll be able to open up something that's been built in Domino in Iris and make changes and deploy it back to Domino. It's pretty wow. exciting stuff. Fantastic. So uh, I know that the, um, the uh, time is our enemy here, Jason, <laughs> but I know that we'll actually, uh, in the future, we'll have a, another roadmap session. We will take longer than 15 minutes to do it. Um, but I want to leave you with three thoughts um, that we want to share with you. Firstly, reinforcing what you heard from Richard. You know, our goal is to be a leader in the applica uh, low-code application uh, platform space for both professional and citizen developers. So think uh, Vault MX and think Domino Vault. And, and also what you've heard here is with bringing um, the technology, the tech from Vault MX gives us the ability to further protect and enhance the way you develop applications in Domino today in really stunning ways. And also the last aspect is we realize that, you know, um, in, inside an organization, you know, moving to low-code tools is a must. We heard that from Dion, right? Um, um, but giving you all the tools that you need and making sure that you have a range of tools that interoperate with each other and get you to all those back-end systems and sources is going to be very important. So uh, the last, last point is really about we want to make sure that you can do what you're doing today but do it better, and we also want you to be able to extend the range of the types of applications that you're building. A anything else to add to that? Jason? We need an hour for this next time, maybe yeah. more. That's yeah. what I have to add. And we're then super we'll excited about it. Yeah, and then uh, I'm sure by the next time we have this conversation, maybe we'll even have a prototype or something. You know, I think we might. Yeah, that'd be tremendous. All right, well, well thanks, all the best. Thanks, all the best. Thanks so much for attending. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Be well, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on another session.